hair's a little wild today. All right. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Lauren with Laura's Leaves. And if you've made it to part two, thank you guys. <laughs> today we're going to be doing part two of my first plant haul of 2021. This is gonna be the brunt of the haul. And I'm even missing a few plants because I can't seem to find them. I think they're in my basement <laughs> in my greenhouse downstairs. So I'm just gonna let them be. I will tell you what they are though. So let's start off with what I found at Brumley and Bloom. Two videos back, I did a tour of their plant shop and this is what I found. What I went there for specifically was this little, little gal. This here is a Hoya Chelsea. Like I mentioned in last week's video or last video, it might not be last week, but you know what I mean. And uh, when I did the tour, they get new plants every Saturday. So this is what they had on box Saturday morning and they had some left. So I picked up one of these babies. The other plant I went there specifically for was this Hoya Kentiana. Now my plans for this is to put it in my south facing window and hopefully get some really nice light and deep pink color to the leaves. I think kind of similar to the Crimson Princess when they get that pink sheen. It's just really, really pretty. I'm not a huge pink lover, but when it's mixed with the green and this cream color, it is really pretty. I've seen these before and passed them up. So when I saw that they were having these for 15 bucks, I decided it's worth the trip to the farmer's market to go pick one up. So I did. Another plant that I got at Brumley and Bloom that I was kind of eyeballing on the restock was this Calathea White Fusion. As you can see behind me, I've kind of been getting into the prayer plant family a little bit more, trying to experiment with more Calathea. So far, so good, except for the Zabrina. That one is a mother. I cannot figure it out. It's finicky. It's fickle. But I heard this one is pretty fickle as well. So I have it over here with a humidifier along with all the other prayer plants. And that's usually not sitting there. We will talk about this head in a minute and try to keep it humid, give them all a nice humid area to live. But the leaves on this are just so gorgeous. The variegation is just so gorgeous. And I don't know if it really picks up on camera, but it's purpley. The undersides of the leaves and the right light are purple. It's very cool, very interesting, and I've never seen one of these in person. And for the reasonable price of 10 bucks, I think it's a pretty good steal of a deal. Brumley and Bloom is pretty affordable and they definitely get new variety every time. So thumbs up for that. I went there in hopes of getting one of their Dragon Bone Cactus Baskets, which they usually seem to have every time. So maybe in the future, I will go back and purchase that, but I opted out of buying that because up at their front counter where they typically keep more of their like specialty plants, as I was checking out, I saw this. Now let me take it out of the pot. This is a variegated Burl Marks and it was priced very reasonably and there is a lot of new growth and you can see on the stems there is a lot of hope for good variegation and i love my regular burl marks it's a very easy grower it grows kind of weird and wonky and odd and i love that in a plant the weirder the more abstract the better for me in my opinion so if this grows anything like the regular variety, which I would assume it would, just maybe grow slower, it's gonna look pretty cool when it does mature. And there's not a whole lot of variegation on this one leaf, but these stems are promising. And I'm curious to see if what's ever coming up down here is gonna be variegated or not. Didn't expect this to be there. They didn't even know this was showing up in their shipment. 
very cool. I don't know if this was a happy accident, but a happy accident for me. I am very happy to have this and I only paid $38 for it locally, which I don't mean to brag, but that's pretty cool. So right? that's everything that I found at Brimley and Bloom. After that, we made a trip to Volk's Nursery. There I bought um, the Devil's Backbone Cactus that I showed in the tour video. It didn't show me picking it up, but I did pick it up. And I bought a big hanging basket of Hoya Crimson Princess, but both of those are down in my greenhouse downstairs and I already started the video. So you're just gonna have to trust me on that one. After that, we went to Telly's in Ann Arbor and at Telly's, I found a really gorgeous orchid. However, someone tell me, do cats like orchids? Because I had it at home displayed very nicely on my kitchen table and both of my cats were sitting on the table and they are definitely the reason for this damage. I did not buy it like this. This damaged orchid is an ascidium. It is a type of inter, I can't even say it. It says intergeneric hybrid. I don't know what that means, but I think it's really pretty. I'm not the best orchid taker carer. I've had some, I've had some Phalaenopsis orchids, but that's about something set up. This one is gorgeous though. The cat's already knocked off a bloom and ate some of the foliage. So now I have to figure out where to put this, where it can get appropriate light and I can care for it appropriately without my cats trying to eat it. Any tips are welcomed. My cats do not mess with very many of my plants. Legitimately, it's only a few. They like my Syngonium Chia Pence any spider plant, and I guess orchids. So, but these, I'm not a big flower person, but the shapes of these flowers are beautiful. The color is beautiful. They look like little dancing ladies with dresses on doing a dance and I love it. And I hope the kitty cats leave it alone. My hair is wild. Also at Telly's, I'm gonna try to go a little bit faster. I do not want this to be too long for you guys but I found this little variegated string of hearts. I picked that up. I've never grown a variegated string of hearts before, but it is cute and little and perfect for me to try out. It's not too big of a pot, so if I kill it, I don't have to feel too bad about it. Super cute. Then we have this little corn cob cactus. This is a Euphorbia mammillaris variegata. It's commonly referred to as the Indian corn cob cactus and I just think it's cute. So he's with my other euphorbias in my den, chilling out. Well, right now he's right here, but I already potted him up and I'm excited to grow this. Last time I went to Telly's, this was there and I didn't pick it up and I was kind of regretting it. Up next, we have a type of Senecio. Now this is the type of what, Senecio macroglacus? I might be saying that wrong. I have the label downstairs in my basement, in my little plant room. Should have labeled it before the video. But this is not an ivy, looks like an ivy, but it is a Senecio, so that's awesome. And hopefully I can grow this thing, snip it, and make a huge basket of it. Because I do like ivy, how some of them look, but I've killed every ivy I've ever grown and we all know the spider mites thing, so best to avoid that when possible. One of the first plants I saw when I walked into Telly's was this Calathea Royal. I'm not sure if that is labeled correctly, I think it is, but I saw it and it immediately made me think of um, the Silver Maranta that has been on my wish list forever, but this is just as good. But this is very similar in appearance, so honestly, this is, oops, some dirt fell out. Honestly, this is just as good, even though I am still looking for that Maranta. 
So here is another Calathea to add to my collection. Hopefully I don't have like seven dead plants in the next month, but so far my Calathea are doing okay. <laughs> but I really love the grayish, bluish color on this. And the undersides are that typical burgundy. I love that. Now for another little guy, this is just some sorted pixie peperomia, but it has some variegation, so I thought it was super cute. Might put it in a terrarium, I'm not sure. Just picked this up for fun. Cute little peperomia. I really do like the peperomias with these little circle leaves. Peperomia are pretty cool and easy to grow as long as you do not overwater them. The last thing I picked up at Telly's was this cute little planter. I've already had this plant, which is my penis cactus, but I saw this planter and it was really cheap and really cute and would be the perfect cash po for my penis cactus. So now I have a dickhead <laughs> and I like it. It's cute. After Telly's, we went to English Gardens and this was the sole purpose for that trip was to get this plant. Now you guys are gonna be like, what? That's not a house plant. Why do you want that? <laughs> well, I went to get this variegated lemon tree that grows pink lemons. I want it. It will grow fruit one day. It will be an outdoor tree in the summer and a house plant in the late fall and winter months. So I will definitely keep you guys updated on this guy's journey. My brother picked one up two weeks ago or a week ago and I solely went back to see if this was left and there were two left, three left. Maybe there were three left. And this was the best looking one. And I'm gonna grow pink lemons, you guys, eventually. But the leaves on this are actually really, really pretty. Really, really textured. We got some all white leaves. But the lemons supposedly come out variegated as well from what they told me. And the lemons are pink, not yellow. So I will keep you guys updated on this. I need to give her a name. I like her. Also at English Gardens, I did pick up this pot that I put the variegated Burl marks in, and I also got, I'll leave the saucer there, but this really cute head planter. Both of those pots were under $10 and 20% off. So that was a really good steal of a deal for some ooh, ceramic pots. I need more, I am running out of pots. You can never have enough cash pose, so that's what I got at English Gardens. So after English Gardens, we went to Goldner Walsh Greenhouse. That place was a hidden gem. Hindsight 2020, we should have stopped there first because purchases would have been made differently if we would have. I'm definitely gonna be going back there and filming a tour. Um, shout out to Andrew with the good plants. If you ever see my channel, I'm talking to you. You had some awesome gems in there and my friend Lindsay and I definitely want to go back and I'm definitely gonna be filming a tour if you'll allow it so there I found this pretty 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 begonia and it was not labeled but they figured it out for me this is called a begonia garden angel silver and I've always wanted the begonias with that like maple shape leaf and here is a new one coming in right there, looking all cute and stuff. So I picked this bad boy up. They had really good prices on Hoya there. They had some Hoya Kentiana. They had the Hoya I'm about to show you. They had a lot of Retusa and I'm forgetting some things. They had quite a bit. They had a great Peperomia selection. Um, Lindsay picked up a really awesome Peperomia Incana that was massive. But I picked up, okay, I might have said the name of the nursery wrong. It is Goldner Walsh Garden and Home. That's what the place is called. But I found this Hoya Gras Gracilis, Gracilis for $16.95. And they had a few more Hoya that I wanted, but I already bought 
a ton of Hoya earlier that day and I just couldn't justify it. So found this, super cool. Lastly, this might be the last plant, though I have a bonus plant to show you. And then I found this little anthurium. I've never seen in person the anthuriums with the purple flowers and they're a little more narrow than your typical big box store anthurium. And this is not labeled. So if someone could help me out and tell me what this is, I think the shapes of the leaves are very cute and the flowers are cute and they're purple, which is one of my favorite colors. I don't know if they show up purple in this light that much. They look more pink, but I promise they're purple, especially these little spadex things, the little flower. Yeah, super cute little anthurium fits cute in my little retro pot. Thank you, Kristen, and I love it. Now on to the final plant of my first plant haul of 2021. Guys, I got an awesome wish list plant for a freaking crazy awesome price from a local plant shop in Midland, Smith's Flowerland, I believe. I will put that down in the description box below, as well as all the other places we went. Let me get the plant. All right, people, make your guesses. Um, I want you to guess, put a comment in the comments down below and take a guess at what this plant is that I found locally for a really good price. It is an Albo Monstera. Now, shout out to Smith's Flowerland. I was put on a wait list for this plant. They sold it to me for a crazy awesome price. I'm not gonna tell you guys because I don't want everyone bombarding them because these plants do not grow very fast. But their customer service was awesome. They reached out to me, told me the plant was finally ready and available when I got there to pick it up. They had it potted up with a nice saucer included, put it in a nice little bag, and they even gave me this um, fertilizer spray for free. And honestly, with what I paid for this, like I could have paid for that too. Like I felt like I should have considering what people sell these for. Awesome, awesome customer service. You know, that is really what the plant community is all about. I understand trying to make a buck and I understand how the market works and I understand why people do sell these for what they sell them for, but the kindness and generosity from that flower shop, amazing. Um, that's what it's about to me. So it was really awesome to see a local business seeing things the same way. Super cool, shout out to Smith's Flowerland. If you are in Michigan, Check them out, great business, great company. So, ladies and gentlemen, this wraps up my first plant haul of 2021. Let me know what your favorite was out of this haul. Um, I don't have a favorite. I It's very hard for me to pick a favorite plant, but this is pretty cool. I really love that orchid and that anthurium. I am not really into flowers, but that one's really cool. And I got some cool pots. I got a lot of cool stuff. I think I need to take it easy going into the month of February. I'm gonna run out of space. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.